Have you ever been in a situation where you compared where you are to where you want to be and suddenly became unmotivated? Well, today we're going to be talking about how comparison affects your productivity and the pros and cons of different types of comparisons and how you can actually create more motivation and therefore more productivity. This is Arthur Carmazzi, best-selling author and currently ranked as one of the world's top 10 thought leaders in organizational culture and leadership. And welcome to Where's Your Brain? Okay, so... Okay, how does comparison affect productivity? Well, basically, this is all about more brain chemistry and the addiction to it. So we've got different types of addictions. And of course, we've also learned about dopamine and uh, even endorphins uh, for the pain hole thing going on. And uh, we've learned about the different neurotransmitters that affect addiction. But let's look at comparison. So. First of all, to motivate or not to motivate, okay? This is the question, okay? Not really quoting Helmlet, but hey, what can I say? Anyway, we've got this um, idea that sometimes if we look at this situation and look at this situation, that we are able to improve our lives. And yet, oftentimes it backfires. Okay, why? Well, that's what we're gonna be looking at now. So the first type of comparison is expectation. The image of what you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to get or whatever, okay, that is in your brain compared to the reality of the situation. So this happens all the time. For example, you go to a fancy restaurant. Your expectation is very different than that of a uh, roadside stall. You don't have the comparison between that and the roadside stall, but you do have the comparison to another very nice restaurant that you also went to in the past. Or Sometimes you compare previous service to existing service. So you've gone to that restaurant over and over again, and yet you've gotten amazing service, but one day you get really bad service. And so therefore you are not comparing the restaurant to any other restaurant, you are comparing it to the previous service that it's had. Now, guess what? This also works when we deal with people. We expect a certain level of passion, excitement, um, whether it's in a relationship or whether it is an employee. And once they have established a benchmark of their performance, if they start to go below that benchmark, what do we compare them against? We compare them against the previous image in our brain of what they should be doing, or for that matter, even can be doing our expectation. This happens in relationships oftentimes where we put that person on a pedestal and we just get try to get them to live up to it, usually in the beginning of relationships. And they don't because the image in our brain doesn't compare to the reality. But even if there is a reality foundation, why is that person dropping or reducing their potential, their productivity, is a question that you should ask rather than making that comparison and assuming that, oh my gosh, this person is just now no good or bad or uh, underperforming or whatever, which is oftentimes the judgment that we make, creating not only a lower level of productivity and engagement between us and these individuals, especially if we're their leaders, but also affecting the individuals and how they perform. Okay, so the expectation element of comparison is only one. Let's go to the next one, which is justification. Okay, and this is where your brain is looking for all the reasons why you're right, why you absolutely need to buy that pair of $5,000 shoes because it's gonna make you look super hot and it's gonna help you to get that extra deal. Okay, or whatever, okay? or sometimes even in a situation when we are at work, okay? Our boss is not having a very good day. So what do we do? We justify why we are 
being lazy or not being productive or uh, not focusing on what we know is going to help us to achieve what we want to achieve. Why? Because we look at that element, okay, of, oh, this thing is going wrong and therefore I am being violated or whatever and my emotions are being, you know, taken away, okay? So we take that opportunity of the comparison to justify why we should, well, basically be less than we can be, okay? Now, of course, at the same time, we could also do the, the same thing, but in the opposite direction. Couldn't it be possible where we would take a, a situation where the, maybe the boss is having a bad day and, and now we compare that to, oh my gosh, this is unlike the boss because he's usually been like this or at least he's tried or whatever and what can we do now to be more supportive to achieve our goals and actually be more productive so maybe the boss can actually overcome all the stuff that he actually or she is dealing with okay so it can have an effect but this of course depends on what you focus on now the other one is evaluation now this is usually oftentimes with decisions and in this particular case we have this perception that we are being logical in how we evaluate should i do this or should i do this what are the pros and the cons but ultimately everything still goes down to an emotional decision. I mean, you've been in a situation where you have evaluated pros and cons on multiple levels and you still make a decision that you more or less thought you were going to make in the first place because it felt right. So, but the element of pros and cons or evaluation when it comes to productivity can help you to essentially compare what you are doing now as a process and evaluate that to other processes that you could be using in order to achieve your objectives. So again, it's all about where you're taking that focus in the comparison. Now, of course, this one is the one that is going to mess you up the most, or it's the one that's going to help you the most. So, this one is contrast. You've been there. It's like, oh my gosh, my friend has two Lamborghinis and a Ferrari and I only have a Porsche. Oh, my life is over. I mean, really, think about it. We oftentimes, no matter how successful we are or no matter what we have, sometimes we are just focusing on that other person or that other group that just has more than we do and we compare their good with our bad. Now, this also happens oftentimes when you're thinking about uh, your appearance or your abilities or your connection with another person um, that uh, you have a relationship with. And especially when we've got social media. I mean, let's look at the facts. People don't post uh, all of the bad stuff that's going on in their lives and social media. But what happens? We compare our reality in contrast with their social media. Oh, their life is so perfect. Oh, look at what these people are doing. Oh, they must be so awesome. They must be so great. Their life must be so great. And so that essentially creates lower levels of confidence, which affects our productivity. Okay, we start to not improve our lives because we're thinking oh you know like these guys are so much better instead of like looking at or the contrast of hey look at what we have achieved in the past six months or look at what i've achieved in the past five years okay contrasting yourself and your own journey to where you are now what you have achieved what you have essentially implemented and done and applied and created in your life from compared to what it was before or in contrast to what it was before. Why do you want to do that? Well, because now that gives you more motivation, which basically increases your productivity because you're saying, look, oh, look at what I did. Look at what I achieved. Look at all these great things that I have done that I ha didn't have 10 years ago or five years ago or even six months ago. Okay, so 
contrast is an opportunity to measure your own success and continue to be productive and motivated to do more. So this is Arthur Karmazi wishing you greater productivity, more motivation, and more success.